Good morning. God had promised King David three special promises. Can you count them? One, two, three. Do you remember what the first promise was? Who was it that was going to be king after David? Do you remember? It was his son, Solomon. Second promise. After Solomon became king, what would he build for God? Do you remember? It was a temple, a special place for the people to worship God. And the third promise is that God told David that there would always be a, someone from his family to be on the throne. And we learned that Jesus is that forever king who would come from David's family and would sit on the throne of David. So since we're counting things today, let's do a little bit of practice. I'm going to teach you a little song, and it counts up to 10, okay? So if you know it, sing along, and if not, maybe you can learn it. It goes like this. One, two, three, Jesus loves me. One, two, Jesus loves you. Three and four, he loves you more, more than you've ever been loved before. Five, six, seven, I'm on my way to heaven. Eight, nine, a mansion is mine. Now we've sung right up to ten. We don't have time to sing it again. But one, two, three, Jesus loves me. One, two, Jesus loves you. Well, Solomon did become king after David. God kept his promise. And now it was time that Solomon was going to build the temple for God, just like God had promised to David, his father. It was going to be a special place where the people could come and worship God. So I'm going to read to you from the Bible now, from the book of First Kings. And Solomon wanted this temple to be very special and it took many many people working on it in order for it to be built and i want you to listen as i read and tell me how long did it take all these people working on this very special temple in order to complete it this is first kings chapter 6 in the end of verse 38 it says the house was finished in all its details and according to all its plans. So he was seven years in building it. So it took seven years for Solomon to take to build the temple. That's longer than some of you have even been around. Some of you aren't even seven years old yet. Wow. But you know what? When it was finished, the people were so happy. Show me your biggest happy face. The people were happy. They were remembering back to the when their ancestors had told them how God had led them in the wilderness and they worshiped God in a tabernacle. The tabernacle was a big tent. Do you remember when we studied that? But this building was going to be permanent. It would be a building where people could come and worship God. So Solomon followed all the directions that God gave about how to build this wonderful temple. Now, what did it look like? And what did they use to build it? Guess what? The Bible tells us. Listen again, I'm going to read to you from 1 Kings chapter 6 and verse 15. Listen to what it says. And he built the inside walls of the temple with cedar boards from the floor of the temple to the ceiling. He paneled the inside with wood. So what was it that they used on the inside? They used wood. And it was even a special kind of wood, cedar wood. Here's a picture of of a cedar chest. When I was growing up, we had a cedar chest that looked a lot like this one, and we would keep blankets and sweaters, 
uh, in it and it smelled so good. I can imagine what it smelled like inside the temple with all of the cedar wood. They also used stones on the outside uh, and on the inside, and there was something else that made it really special. Listen, I'm going to read to you again from 1 Kings chapter 6 and verse 18. It says that the inside of the temple was cedar carved with ornamental buds and open flowers. All was cedar. There was no stone to be seen. So inside the wood, there were some fancy carvings. And it says that one was were buds. Flower buds are when the, bu the flower is closed up before it blooms. And as there were some of those carved. And then there were also open flowers. So when the petals of a flower open up. So it was beautiful besides. So they made these carvings in the wood. And the people worked really hard to make the temple really beautiful. Uh, God told ex Solomon exactly what to do and how it was to be done. He put something over the wood all throughout the temple. Listen again, I'm going to read to you from 1 Kings chapter 6, verse 21. So Solomon overlaid the inside of the temple with pure gold. Wow, everything was covered with gold. Now, we think of gold, I have gold on my ring. We think of it as jewelry. Here's just a little bit of gold you might see. But imagine the whole inside of the temple, the boards were overlaid with pure gold. That must have been so beautiful. Gold is very beautiful. It's also worth a lot of money. This tells us how special the temple was. Here's a picture of what the temple may have looked like. Solomon built the temple and it had different rooms in it. And I'm sure it was very beautiful. God told the specific rooms and the articles of furniture, everything that should be placed inside of it. And there was a very special part of the temple. It was called the most holy place. And inside the most holy place, the priests put the Ark of the Covenant. Now you might remember this. The Ark of the Covenant was the in play, thing that a special box that Moses had built in for the tabernacle and it was put in the most holy place and inside it was kept the Ten Commandments. It was a beautiful box and it was um, all covered with gold. Now, you remember the Ten Commandments. We learned them with Mrs. Belanger back in the summer and in fact, we learned a song. Do you still remember that song that helps us know the Ten Commandments. We're going to sing that right now. All right, let's start. Number one, we've just begun. God should be first in your life. Number two's the idol rule. Those graven images aren't nice. Number three, God's name should be never spoken in jest. Number four, the Sabbath's for our worship and for rest. Number five, we all should strive to honor father and mother. Number six, don't get your kicks from killing one another. Number seven, life is heaven when you're true to your mate. Number eight, don't steal and break this rule for goodness sake. Number nine, don't be the kind who goes around telling lies. Number 10, don't covet when you see your neighbor's house or wife. That's the list that God insists we stay away from these sins. That is why we memorize commandments 1 through 10. The Ark of the Covenant was very special, and the high priest could only come into the most holy place one time each year. And in fact, he had to come every year. The ark was the only place 
when the priest would offer a sacrifice where they could have forgiveness of their sins, but it had to be done over and over again every year. When Solomon finished building the temple, God's people rejoiced and they praised God as they made sacrifices to the Lord. The priest took the Ark of the Covenant into that most holy place and then something really exciting happened. God showed the people that he was there. Listen as I read 1 Kings chapter 8, verses 10 and 11. And it came to pass when the priests came out of the holy place that the cloud filled the house of the Lord so that the priests could not continue ministering because of the cloud. For the glory of the Lord filled the house of the Lord. So what was it that filled the temple? It was a cloud. And what was the cloud? The cloud was the glory of the Lord. God showed his glory to the people by a cloud that filled the temple. And it, it was a sign to the people that God was there and he was wanted them to worship him in the new temple. Now this temple was in Israel, in the city of Jerusalem. It was a very special building. And all the people could come there and worship. And they could bring their sacrifices and they would ask God forgiveness for their sins. Now, does God want us to worship him too? Yes, he does. And we learned in the Ten Commandments that God wants us to worship him alone. He ought to be first in our life. Does that mean that we need to go all the way to Israel, to Jerusalem? No, and in fact, that temple doesn't even, isn't even around today. God still wants us to worship him in everything he, we do. He wants us to praise him and thank him for all he does. That reminds me of another song. Let's sing this one together. We're going to sing two verses. Praise him, praise him, and then thank him, thank him. Praise him, praise him, all ye little children. God is love, God is love. Praise him, praise him, all ye little children. God is love, God is love. Thank him, thank him, all ye little children. God is love, God is love. Thank him, thank him, all ye little children. God is love, God is love. Now we don't have to go all the way to Israel to worship God in a special building. Jesus Christ died and he rose again so that anyone who believes in him can worship God wherever they are. We can worship God in everything we do, whether it's singing, playing a game, eating a snack, talking to friends, reading the Bible, going to church. Jesus made it possible for us to be able to worship God wherever we are. Mm -hmm. 